in continuation to our previous uh, lectures so we start we have seen some of the fabrication methods of uh, character of uh, fabrication methods of production of nano material right as we have seen that nano materials can be fabricated in two ways namely we have seen all this right namely two ways namely top down and the bottom up process right in top down approach nano materials are constructed by removing existing material from larger entities that is what we have seen so this synthesis of nano materials was uh, can be fabricated by two methods one is top down process and another is bottom up process right so in top down process we have ball milling plasma arcing laser sputtering and uh, in bottom up process we have electro deposition solute space reduction solute gel methods and colloidal methods so in the, in the previous content we have seen up to the colloidal method right so in this today's lecture we will see what is electro what is the solution phase reduction and electro deposition and we will see how the materials can be synthesized right so synthesis synthesis of nano material is a, one of the important material one of the important techniques right one of, uh, one of the important uh, techniques of fabrication methods for nano materials right so like that we shall see what is the solution phase reduction because we have already seen what is colloidal method we have seen what are the advantages of colloidal methods and uh, what are the disadvantages the advantages of all these colloidal methods and solution methods in today's lecture we have we will see what is uh, solution uh, what is solution phase reduction right so what is the reduction method in nanotechnology right so this is a very very important question right so what is the reduction method in nanotechnology so the reduction Usually involves uh, usually involves the reduction of metal ions in some type of solvents in some type of solvents and separate it from the reducing agent. Right. So that is what we are telling. So the chemical reduction usually involves usually involves the reduction of metal ions. Right. Reduction of metal ions in some type of solvent and separate and some type of solvent and try to uh, trying to separate that reducing agent. so this method is typically used for the preparation of magnetic metal nanoparticles so solution phase reduction is a method which is used for the preparation of magnetic metal nanoparticles so the magnetic metal nanoparticles such as uh, such as the uh, such as some magnetic nanoparticles some of the magnetic nanoparticles and right? materials that can be fabricated right? so for fabrication of magnetic magnetic nano structures magnetic nano structures can be fabricated right? so the materials that we use for the fabrication of magnetic nano structures or magnetic nano materials the metal for the metal uh, the metals used are just like iron right iron cobalt and nickel iron cobalt and nickel so these are the three important these are the three important metals magnetic metals magnetic mag magnetic uh, so we mean we can tell the magnetic for for the fabrication magnetic nano structure so the basic elements the basic elements that two in metals nothing but iron cobalt and nickel so iron cobalt nickel are the very very important three important metals for the fabrication of magnetic nano structure so solution phase reduction is one of the method is maybe one of the method for the preparation of magnetic nano particles such as iron cobalt and nickel nano particles etc that's why chemical reduction usually involves the reduction of metal ions right metal ions in some type of solvent and separate it from the reducing agent right so what are these reducing agents reducing agents can be uh, the, the reducing agents and the metallic salt solutions and if you put some uh, reducing agents like metallic salt solution then what that is what we can see from the figure right so how do you separate nano particles from the solutions so the commonly used sealing sealing techniques the commonly used sealing techniques to separate nano particles are chromatography one is one method which we can uh, distinguish uh, the nano particles from the solution is chromatography and other is nano filtration so nano filtration and chromatography are the two important techniques are the two important techniques where we can separate the nano particles from solutions solution phase that's why it's called solution phase reduction right so these are the two important methods for the for the separation of nano particles from the solutions free right? so chromatography samples are separated so chromatography in, in so these are the two methods what we told so we will we, we will see what is this chromatography and nano filtration right so chromatography in chromatography samples are separated in mobile phase samples are separated in mobile phase uh, through a stationary phase through a stationary phase and the rate of separation and the rate of separation 
of uh, the nanoparticles from the solution depends upon the partition speed it depends upon the partition speed so partition speed partitioning speed is one of the parameter one of the parameter where the rate of where the uh, station phase and the rate of uh, rate of separation depends on where we can uh, we can separate the uh, we can separate the nanoparticles from the solution so the partition speed of the particle through the stationary phase through the stationary phase and the partition speed so chro chromatography samples are separated in mobile phase to a stationary phase and the rate of separation depends on the partition speed of the particle to the stationary phase right so this is one of the method this is one of the method to separate this is one of the method to separate uh, the nanoparticles from the solutions so so that is what first method is what is we are calling as chromatography where we can separate where we can separate where we can uh, separate the nanoparticles from the solutions that are free right so another method another method is nothing but the nf method that is what we call it as nano filtration right nano filtration is another pressure driven membrane nano filtration is another pressure driven membrane separation process which is often which is significantly used for water softening water softening right? which is often used for water softening that is separation of divalent metal the divalent cations and monovalent cations right so here this nano filtration is nothing but is uh, is another method nano filtration is another method for the separation of nano particles from the solution stream right so that's why we are telling nano uh, filtration is another pressure driven membrane so it is a pressure driven membrane and chromatography is a mobile phase device right so mobile phase to a stationary phase the stationary phase and the rate of stages in the rate of separation depends upon the partition speed of the particle through the stationary phase right whereas the nano filtration is a another pressure driven membrane separation process which is often used for water softening that is what we use some divalent and monovalent cations right so water softening that is separation of divalent and monovalent cations so uh, divalent and monovalent cations can be separated can be separated so that's why we tell that it is one of the nano particle uh, from solution that is what how that, that is what we are telling that nano particles can be separated from solutions so the nano filtration is another pressure driven membrane process which is often used for water softening water softening is the separation of divalent and monovalent cations right so the pore size of nano free nano filtration membrane the pore size of the nano filtration membrane is slightly larger than that of the reverse osmosis slightly larger than that of the reverse osmosis membranes ranging from 1 to 10 nanometer range right so it ranges from 1 to 10 nanometer range that's what nano uh, nano filtration membranes is slightly larger nano filtration membranes are slightly larger uh, than the uh, than the reverse osmosis that reverse osmosis takes place you know, reverse osmosis generally takes place membranes which are ranging from 1 to 10 nanometer range so, so these are the two important methods these are the two important techniques sieving techniques these are the two important sieving techniques the two important sieving techniques which in which in nano particles can be separated from the solutions are nothing but the chromatography and nano filtration right and so what are the reducing agents what are the reducing agents in the nano particles because uh, reducing agents in the nano particles because we are uh, we are trying to separate nano particles from solutions so to separate the nano particles from solutions we are using chromatography and nano filtration right so what is reduction because it is a solution phase reduction right so since it is a solution phase reduction so what are the reducing agents are used what are the reducing agents used in nano particles so several reducing agents including sodium borohydride sodium citrate sodium biohydrate borohydrate and sodium citrate so several reducing agents like sodium borohydrate sodium citrate etc plays a major role as reducing agents so the the uh, reducing agents that are used to separate a nano particle from the solutions that uh, the solutions by using some reducing agents like so uh, sodium borohydrate and sodium citrate right so this plays a important role in reducing agents in the formation of metal salts into metal nanoparticles formation of metal salts into metal nanoparticles so most of the chemical reactions require an elevated temperature right so most of the chemical reactions because the, these are the uh, these reducing agents when uh, when implemented uh, when implemented 
to for the separation of nanoparticle for the separation of nanoparticle uh for separation of uh, when they are used when these reducing agents are used as separation of nanoparticle from solution so the, the chemical reaction involved there are certain chemical reactions will be involved so most of the chemical reactions requires an elevated temperature elevated temperature means the high, high, high temperature but some chemical reactions will reduce nanoparticles at room temperature that means the separation of nanoparticles separation of nanoparticles from the solution using the reducing agents they require some elevated temperatures at the same time requires the nanoparticles can be uh, can be uh, free and the nanoparticles can be fabricated at, at elevated temperatures at the same time the nanoparticles can be fabricated at room temperature so by using this solution phase reduction method hence lithium is the strongest reducing agent so out of this lithium is a metal which is used as a strongest reducing agent because when we are calling it cover why is calling metal because several reducing agents that is what we are seeing including sodium borohydrate bor sodium citrate plays a major role as reducing agents right In the formation of metal salts into metal nanoparticles that's why most of the chemical reactions required an elevated temperature elevated temperature but some reactions will produce will reduce to nanoparticles will reduce the size of the uh, the size but some due to some chemical due to some reactions but some chemical reactions will reduce to nanoparticles at room temperature right and lithium is the strongest reducing agent so what is the chemical reduction method for copper nanoparticle what what is the chemical reduction method for uh, for copper nanoparticles copper nanoparticles that is what we write cu nps cu nps nothing but copper nanoparticles have been synthesized have been synthesized to an easy route have been synthesized to an easy route by chemical reaction at room temperature right they, they, they can be synthesized by chemical reduction at room temperature so that means the cu2 plus ions were reduced the cu2 plus ions were reduced and stabilized the cu2 plus ions were reduced and stabilized with sodium borohydride and polyvinyl hydride so these are the uh, and stabilized with sodium borohydride and polyvinyl pyrrolidine right so these are the chemical reduction methods of separation of copper nanoparticles right so what is the reduction method for the preparation of silver nanoparticles here we have to see we have seen what how the chemical reduction methods are used for copper nanoparticles and what are the chemicals that are used to separate the copper nanoparticles uh, copper na to separate copper nanoparticles are nothing but sodium borohydride and polyvinyl borohydride right so these are the two reducing agents these are the two reducing agents that can be used to separate the chemical uh, to separate the copper nanoparticles so what is the reaction for the preparation of silver nanoparticles so, so how the silver nanoparticles are uh, reduced how the silver nanoparticles are separated right so silver nanoparticles with controllable sizes silver nanoparticles with controllable sizes were synthesized if they are synthesized by reduction of uh, by reduction of uh, silver silver uh, silver nh3 silver nano silver uh, uh, silver uh, silver ag nh3 two plus cations right with glucose with glucose and galactose and maltose right and lactose these are the three Uh, controllable size of the detection of these metals so nanoparticle synthesis was carried out at various ammonium concentration so that is what ag silver ammonia silver ammonia that, that's what ammonium concentrations around the range 0.005 to 0.0.20 m moles and ph conditions of these are 11.5 to 13 resulting in the average particle size that we are which can be obtained from 25 to 450 nanometer so these are the two method these are the uh, two, these are the some of the methods where copper nanoparticles and silver nanoparticles can be separated uh, it can be separated um, uh, can, can be separated with solutions with solutions acting as a reducing agents so these are the two redu these are the uh, reducing agents right so So now, if you come to the electro deposition process, the electro deposition, right? So the principle of electro deposition is inducing chemical reaction. So electro deposition, why we are talking about electro deposition is in previously we have seen uh, that fabrication methods in bottom up process we have electro deposition, solution phase reduction, sol gel method, and colloidal method, right? So colloid, so in the in the previous uh, in the few in the previous few minutes of talk we have seen what is solution phase reduction, what are the reduction agents that are used. Uh, All the, what are the reaction agents are used to separate nanoparticles uh, from the solution by using certain uh, reducing agents, right? So if you come to the electro deposition process, so electro deposition is nothing but is uh, the electro principle of electro deposition 
is inducing chemical reaction in an aqueous electrolyte solutions with the help of applied voltage with the help of applied voltage for example this is a process of using electric current this is a process of using electric current to coat an electrically conductive object to coat an electrically conductive object with a relatively with a relatively thin layer of metal thin layer of metal so the principle of electro deposition uh, electro deposition is inducing chemical reactions in a aqueous electrolyte solution with the help of applied voltage with the help of applied voltage example this is a process of using electric current to coat an electrically conductive object with a relatively thin layer of metal so what is the electro deposition method of synthesis of nanoparticles right so what is the basically what is electro deposition method of synthesis so synthesis of nanoparticles nanomaterials right so electrochemical deposition or electro deposition for short refers to a film growth nothing but a film growth that means how the thin films are framed and as how the films are growing on a uh, how the films will grow on a substrate if you take this is a glass substrate or something right how a thin layer how a thin layer is grown right how a thin layer is grown on the substrate right so if you take this as a substrate substrate can be a glass substrate can be glass or a, a transparent sheet or silver or a silicon or whatever may be which acts as a which acts as a substrate that means growing of thin films right so electro deposition is also one of the method for the deposition of thin films for deposition of thin films on the substrate right so that's what metal deposition that is what we call it as metal deposition electro chemical deposition or electro deposition what refers to uh, refers to film growth process which consists of formation of metallic coating metallic coating on to a base material that is what base material in the pc base materials are nothing but which acts as a substrate okay so occurring through the electrochemical reduction of metal ions from an electrolyte from an electrolyte to achieve the desired electrical and corrosion resistance right so so how this is what we can uh, uh, we can uh, synthesis of nano material synthesis of nano material so electro deposition or electro deposition refers to film growth growth of thin film on a substrate right on a substrate that will occur as a electrochemical reduction of metal ions metal ions from a electrolyte to achieve the desired electrical and corrosion resistance process so what is basically the electro deposition method so electro deposition is an established electrochemical technology using a redox reaction using a redox reaction we using a redox reaction to produce thin films to produce a thin films that means uniform coating the uniform coating uniform coating of on a substrate electrode by passing a current through an electrochemical cell by passing an electrode through a electrochemical cell this is what we can see uh, how uh, we can use or we can use electro deposition methods right so we have here we have here we have cathode and anode right and we, which is connected to a voltmeter and we have some electro deposition chemical iron chloride and iron chloride uh, which is a combination right so electro can be electrolyte solution electro deposition uh, electro deposition is a conven is a conventional process of coating coating of thin layer of one metal on top of different metal on a top of a different metal to modify its surface properties for example for example if you take a substrate if you take a substrate right if you take if you take a substrate let us take one substrate right so this is one uh, this is one glass substrate right so to deposit a thin film to deposit a thin film on this substrate in the in the process of electro deposition right in the process in the process of electro deposition right we use uh, we, we use this particular process right so where we can uh, fabricate thin film like this okay? we can fabricate a thin film of design uh, design uh, structure or design nanometer Desired thickness or uh, with some de uh, desired deposition rate, we can uh, we can uh, deposit a thin film, thin layer of one metal top metal on top of a different metal to to modify its surface properties. That means if you try if you first deposit a, if you try to deposit first a magnetic material, if you try to deposit a magnetic material on that. on that to avoid the oxidation of that particular uh, magnetic material oxidation we deposit some other non magnetic on that we again deposit some magnetic right so that means we can frame we can frame a structure we can frame a multi layer structure we can frame a multi layer structure 
So this is one of the de deposition technique. This is one of the deposition technique where we can fabricate the uh, thin film nanomaterials, right? So that's all. Electric deposition is a conventional process of coating a thin layer of one metal on top of different metal to modify its surface properties. Surface properties to modify its surface properties in the sense to avoid the uh, oxidation of the metal that was deposited on the substrate. To avoid the oxidation of the metal deposition on the substrate, right? We use uh, different layers. We use different layers and study some convect. Uh, we study certain uh, conductive measurements. I mean, we uh, we try to study some conductive uh, measurements, right? So the objectives of electroplating is to improve the corrosion resistance. So objectives of electroplating is to improve the uh, corrosion resistance of the metal. Example: chromium and nickel coated components in automotive applications, right? For the aesthetic appearance of the metals are reducing the cost. Example: gold, silver, aluminium, right? So to deposit a gold film, right? So to, uh, we can deposit a gold film. We can uh, we can go for silver. Uh, we can go for aluminium. We can go for uh, what is that uh, magnetic, non-magnetic materials, whatever the material, whatever the materials that can be deposited on the substrate, that can be deposited on the substrate, can be done with the help of this particular method. In uh, this particular method, that is what we call as electro deposition methods. Right. So basically, overall, if you can, can conclude, this electro deposition method is one of the uh, methods where we can deposit uh, the thin film on a substrate using some electrochemical reaction. Right. So let us see. Let us go further. So electro deposition is an ideal one for fabricating uniform and dense thin layer coatings on a complex shaped components with high quality, with high quality and productivity. So electro deposition is an is a is one of the technique for fabrication uniform and dense thin layer coating. Thin layer that means uh, thin film coatings on the complex shaped components with high quality and productivity. The thin layer components with complex shape in the sense the topology of the substrate that we choose should be a uh, somewhat complex, right? The complex, right? It should it should not be any uh, normal mode. The topology, the, the geometry of the material, the geometry of the uh, the geometry of the substrate that we choose uh, should should be in such a way because it's the electro deposition one of the uh, chemistry technique, right? Because we use chemicals, right? Electro deposition is an idea fabricating uniform uh, dense thin layers coating on the complex shaped components with high quality and productivity. That means the topology of the uh, the topology of the substrate should be uh, somewhat uh, different, right? Then only we can uh, deposit uh, the thin films uh, by using this particular electro deposition method. So it has been reported that the electro deposition process is less expensive, right? Is less less expensive in coating the traditional CVD. The traditional CVD that is, uh, is somewhat cheaper than the chemical vapor deposition. Method without compromise of coating quality, so it is one of the uh, less expensive, right? So it's one of the some of the less expensive method, uh, less expensive method that we use in CVD methods, right? CVD method without the compromise of coating quality, the quality can be the deposition rate or the deposition of the thin film on the substrate. The quality of the thin film that is deposited on the substrate will be very very good, right? So good nature, good quality of the deposition. A good quality of the thin layer can be obtained on that particular uh, substrate using this particular uh, using this particular technique that is called electro deposition technique. So, what are the different types of electro deposition? Electro deposition, electrophoric deposition, a term for a broad range of industrial purposes which includes electro coating, e coating, cathodic electro deposition, anodic electro deposition, and electrophoretic coatings or electrophoretic paintings. Right. So, these are the different. Uh, um, types of electro depositions, right? Electro deposition uh, for a broad uh, for a broad range of industrial purposes, which include electro electro coating, e coating, right? Electro coating, e coating, cathodic electro deposition, anodic electro deposition, electrophoretic coatings or electrophoretic paintings. So these are the different types of electro deposition. So what is the effect of polarization? What is the effect of polarization on electro deposition? Polarization mechanism. Uh, is a mechanism that causes an electrode potential to alter during electrolysis when the anode's potential when the anode potential becomes nobler than the cathode. Right? It has the effect depending upon the conditions of. It has the effect. That means it has effect. In it. it is depending upon the conditions, nature of the uh, nature of the uh, condition, right? Of decreasing battery output voltage, uh, decreasing battery output voltage, increasing the voltage required for electrolysis cells. Or lowering currents. So, 
So uh, this uh, this is what uh, effect of polarization on electro deposition. Hey, right? so polarization. Uh, the what what uh, what is the effect of polarization in the same? Polarization is the mechanism that causes an electrode's potential to alter the during electrons when the when the anode potential becomes uh, nobler nobler than the uh, cathode. It has the effect right, of decreasing bat uh, uh, decreasing battery output voltage, increasing the voltage required for electro uh, electrolysis cells or Lowering currents, right? So, what are the characteristics of electro depositions, right? So, there are so many characteristics of electro depositions. Some of them, so many properties, including strength, including strength, right? Water resistance, corrosion resistance, corrosion resistance, H rates, H rates, right? H rates, the deposit uh, H rates in the sense how how high we can etch the thin film, how high we can etch the thin film on the substrate, H rates and magnetic properties, magnetic properties like uh, permeability, by susceptibility, right, whether it is a ferromagnetic, uh, sorry, uh, permeability, susceptibility, right, so magnetic properties, right, the thermal uh, magnetic properties are strongly depending on the texture or crystal orientation or the crystal orientation of the electro deposit which in turn depend on all the processing variables. So these are the, some of the characteristics of electro deposition. So electro deposit many properties including uh, including strength, strength of the deposit, strength of the film that is grown, wear resistance, corrosion resistance and the, what is the etching rate and what are the magnetic properties, magnetic properties, uh, what, are, what are the uh, 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 strong, uh, these are the, uh, magnetic properties that are depending upon the texture orientation, crystal orientation. Right? Uh, texture crystal orientation of the electro deposit, which in turn is independent, which is uh, which is dependent on all the processing variables. So these are the, some of the characteristics of electro depositions, right? So what are the what are the advantages of this? Uh, 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 what are the advantages of this electro deposition? So electro deposition is less expensive. That is what we have seen. That electro deposition is relatively cheap mm -hmm. and can be performed at low temperatures. It can be performed at low temperatures, which will minimize interdiffusion of materials. Which will minimize the interdiffusion of materials in the case of multi-layer thin film preparation. That is what multi-layer thin film preparation. So the advantage, the advantage of this electro deposition is um, this is more probably the cheap. It is a very low expensive technique and can be performed at low temperature. It does not require any high temperature or a high vacuum, right? Or it, it does not require any uh, high vacuum temperature or substrate temperature and whatever that, right? This can be performed at low temperature. Which will minimize the interdiffusion of materials. Interdiffusion means interlayer exchange coupling. When we speak about the magnetic properties, when we speak about the magnetic properties, and if you take the two ferromagnetic properties, there is an inter exchange coupling between the two thin films, which are the two thin films that are deposited on the substrate. When when we deposit some multi-layer, when we deposit some multi-layer on the thin film on the substrate, right? So there is uh, there is some interlayer exchange coupling between the two metals, between the two metals that are uh, that are deposited. That's what um, which which will minimize interlayer coupling or interdiffusion of materials in the case of multi-layer thin film preparation. So this uh, electro deposition will have a greater advantage when we deposit a thin film. When we deposit a multi-layer thin film, because the advantage of using this uh, electro deposition is. Uh, we can uh, we can uh, the interlayer uh, interlayer exchange coupling it can be minimized interlayer exchange coupling can be minimized right in case of electro in, when we use uh, electro deposit technique for the fabrication of multi layer thin films so this is one one of the advantages and moreover the film thickness the film thickness of the deposition rate can be controlled the film thickness of the deposition rate can be controlled by monitoring uh, by uh, by frequently checking the amount of charge delivered. Uh, the amount of charge delivered and it can be followed by amount of charge delivered with, uh, with respect to current and time with respect to current and time that is what the film thickness can be controlled by monitoring the amount of charge delivered whereas the deposition rate can be followed by the variation of current with time by the variation of current with time right so this is also one of the deposition uh, one of the advantages of electro deposition so electro deposition method having advantages in such a way that the multi layer thin films can be grown so that the interlayer exchange coupling can be minimized right especially when we uh, grow the magnetic materials and we when we grow the magnetic materials and we grow the magnetic materials on a substrate 
when we grow some different magnetic materials on a substrate like if you take iron if you take iron if you deposit iron as a one thin layer and if you deposit cobalt as another thin layer and if you deposit uh, nickel on one more layer the interlayer exchange coupling between iron cobalt cobalt nickel and nickel cobalt and uh, iron cobalt or iron nickel or any magnetic or non magnetic the interlayer exchange coupling can be minimized so a, this is one of the advantage one of the advantage where we can use electro deposition Techniques and moreover, the deposition rate of the material, deposition rate of the material can be controlled by frequently changing the current, by frequently changing the power, by frequently changing the power. Uh, power, of course, uh, by frequently changing the current, by frequently changing the current with respect to the time. That is why we call it as deposition rate. That means the yielding parameter, the yielding parameter of the film can be easily monitored. The yielding parameter of the film can be easily monitored by using this particular technique. By using uh, this particular technique compared to another process of fabrication of nanomaterials in top down or bottom up process, right? And moreover, the composition, the composition and the defect chemistry, the composition of the film, the composition of the film that is grown on the substrate can be controlled. So that was the composition and defect chemistry can be controlled by magnitude of the applied potential. That means if you try to change the potential, if you try to change the potential, right? We can, uh, we, uh, by if we change, uh, if we try to change the potential, the deposition rate also try to fluctuate. Deposition rate also can be fluctuated. That means whatever the deposition rate and whatever the, the whatever uh, whatever the power, whatever the deposition rate, whatever the yield of the thin film can be easily uh, controlled. That's why we're telling the composition, the composition of film. The composition, if you take iron as a 10%, uh, if, you, if you take iron 10% and cobalt as 90%, then, of course, we can control the composition, right? We can control the composition. So, we, that's what the composition and defect chemistry can be controlled by the magnitude of the applied potential, which can be used to deposit non equilibrium phases. Non equilibrium phases, in the sense, because it's a purely dependent on temperature, so there may be phase transition, right? So, that is the reason why we use, which can be used to deposit into non equilibrium phases, right? So, so in this lecture, we have seen. What are the deposition in the, in the next coming lectures? We will see what are the uh, uh, top down process, right? Just we have a summary of this, right? So, as you have seen in the fabrication methods of nanotechnology, as uh, it's uh, fabrication methods of nanomaterials, uh, that is what in synthesis of nanomaterials you have seen, we have two processes one is a top down process, and other is a bottom up process. In bottom up process, we have uh, till now, till today's lecture, we were seeing about what are, what, what are the colloidal methods, what are the solution method, and what is solution phase reduction methods, and what is what is electro deposition method. Right. So we have seen what is colloidal method, what is a solution gel method, how the solutions are framed, how it is, uh, how the particles can be synthesized using solution gel methods in our previous lecture. And today we have seen how the nano material, the nano materials can be, nano particles can be separated, can can be separated. From the solution, nanoparticles can be separated from the solution using some phase reduction, right? At the same time, we have seen how the electro deposition, how the electro deposition can be used to fabricate the thin films. That's why we tell that in vapor deposition methods, we have electro deposition solution phase reduction methods also, right? So in the next coming lecture, we'll see what is the top down process and in top down process, we shall see what is ball milling and plasma arcing and what is laser sputtering. Right. So with this, we can conclude this and thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.